My name is Mackenzie, and I'm so happy you get to join us for our Take the Lead Parade today. So I get the honor of working with a first grade group here at Fellowship. Our final Grand Marshal today, her name is Ruth. She wasn't one of the judges, but she lived during the time when the judges were in power. She faced some sad, hard things in her life, but God put people in her life that she could follow and who cared about her. So I want to start off our time together by asking you a question. We will put it on the screen and give you a minute to talk about it with whoever you're worship worshiping with at home. Think about some people that are real or imaginary that you look up to every day. Maybe they are people that you've read about or have seen in a movie or you know in real life. Like I look up to my grandma because she's a nurse and I want to be a nurse when I grow up. Now imagine you had to pick one person in your life that you had to follow around every day of your life. Who would you choose? So now, let's all worship together. I find my joy in the Lord. He is my hope, He is my shelter in the storm. y'all's answers in worship with you this morning. Like I said, today we're talking about Ruth. Now Ruth is found in the Bible in the book of, any guesses? If you guessed Ruth, you're correct. She has her own book in the Bible that is written all about just her. 
And now let's watch this video to see what happened. There once was a woman named Ruth who lived in the land called Moab. Ruth married into the family of a woman named Naomi. But all of the men in Naomi's family died and Ruth was left without a husband. One day, Naomi decided to go back to her homeland of Israel and Ruth decided to go with her. On their journey, Naomi said to Ruth, go back to your mother's home. May the Lord bless you. But Ruth was determined to go on with Naomi. And Ruth said, don't ask me to leave you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Through love and kindness, Ruth would not give up on Naomi. God had a plan for Ruth and guided her along the way. The Lord provided Ruth with a job working in a field and Ruth never gave up. Ruth followed her heart and in doing so, God rewarded her faithfulness. She married a godly man and Ruth's son would carry out God's plan to bring Jesus to this earth. Ruth was born and raised in Moab. She met a nice man who immigrated and, which means moved to her country from Bethlehem. Things were great for about 10 years for Ruth and her husband, but sadly, he passed away, as did Ruth's brother. Then it was Ruth, her mother-in-law, Naomi, and her sister-in-law, and her. It was really tough. Her mother-in-law, Naomi, wanted to move back to her homeland, and Ruth had admired her so much, especially being all by herself in a strange land. Naomi had grown to feel like her own mother so she couldn't bear the thought of her being back all alone. She wanted to take care of her. That was incredibly brave and kind of Ruth. She barely even knew much about God at the time, but she told Naomi that she would follow her and her God forever. It was a good thing that she did. Ruth remarried to a man named Boaz, who loved God with his whole heart. And because Ruth married Boaz, she became part of the family lines that Jesus came from. Ruth's story teaches us that God gives us leaders that we can follow. And guess what? That's our big idea. God gives us leaders that we can follow. Repeat after me. God gives me leaders I can follow. Hi there, Chicken Nuggets. It's me, Carl. And I'm Andy. And welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow Hey Carl, how you doing? Well, I'm doing as good as a fox wearing yoga pants on a train in the Netherlands. So... Great. Doing great. Okay, awesome. So what's that? Oh, this? You've never seen a mystery music jar before? Can't say I have. What does it do? Well, whatever feeling you're having, it plays that kind of music. It can sense what you're feeling and send a song to match it. Kind of like a song hug, but without the actual hugging. Does it have batteries? Nope. Electrical cords? Nope. Then how does it work? I told you, Andy, it's a Mr. Music Jar. Watch, I'll have it play a happy song. And if I want a sad type of song. I felt that, right here. Or perhaps a song to get me prepared for battle. Or a song if I by chance see an extra chicken nugget at the bottom of my bag. That was, that was really good. Can I try? <laughs> Here we go. I don't like this game. You know what else it does? It also plays inspirational music. So anytime you want to give an inspirational speech, you just open this thing up. Watch. Pineapples. Aren't they crazy? They look like they're from out of this world. Who knew that they're not? They're from this world. Pineapples are crazy. You know what else is crazy? Aliens. They scare me. I don't know whether or not I believe in them, but 
What? The Statue of Liberty, Paul Bunyan, trees, cut wood, and Tabasco sauce. Oh, hey, Jada. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Wait, have you been crying? No. Yes, yes he has. Don't let him fool you. What are you up to, Jada? Oh, no, not a lot. Just checking in to make sure you guys read this story for this week, because we are about to go through it now. Yes, <laughs> of course we read the story. Why didn't you remind me? Oh yeah, um, I really love the story. The story was super cool. I love when that person did that thing, and then when Moses was, came out of nowhere, I was like, ah, and did that one super specific thing that we all remember. Yep. Moses wasn't in this story. Well, I think what Andy was trying to say is Moses loved God, and since he loved God, God is everywhere. And okay, we didn't read the story. <laughs> it's okay, guys. I can tell you all about it. Open up your Bible to Ruth chapter 1, Carl. Now, there was a woman named Naomi, but sadly, her husband had passed away. Oh, that is sad. Did she have any other family? She did. Two sons. Oh, that's good. But they died, too. <gasps> so let me get this straight. Naomi lost both of her sons and her husband. Why would you tell the story with such a sad ending, Jada? Guys... We're only at the beginning. Oh, carry on. So Naomi was obviously upset about losing her husband and two sons and wanted to move back to her hometown. Oh, by herself? Well, her sons each had a wife, so she still had her two daughters-in-law, and one of them was named Ruth. Hey, that's the name of the book. Good catch, Andy. Thanks, Carl. Now, Ruth didn't know a lot about God, but she did love her mother-in-law. And even though she could easily go back to her mother and family, for some reason, she felt she needed to stay with Naomi. Well, what did Naomi say about that? Well, she loved her daughters-in-law, but she felt they'd be better off if they went back to their own families. But Ruth, she clung to Naomi. Did the other sister-in-law go back to her family? She did, but Ruth wouldn't. It was actually really cool. Ruth looked at Naomi and told her she would follow her. Follow her? What does that mean? Like, walk behind her? Kinda. Ruth said that she would go where Naomi went and she would worship the God that Naomi did. She was committed to following Naomi for the rest of her life. Wow, that's real devotion. It really is. I wonder why she did that. Well, both of them had experienced terrible loss. And Ruth, being the younger one, looked up to Naomi as someone she trusted a leader. So Naomi was Ruth's leader? Yeah, in a way. Ruth decided to put her trust in Naomi and it ultimately worked out because God took care of them. Ruth even found a new husband. Wow, how awesome is it that Naomi was there for Ruth? And that Ruth was there for Naomi. It's very cool. And that's why I wanted us to read this story because no matter where we are in life or what we go through, we will always have people to help us and lead us. That is some good news. I love knowing that God can give me leaders that I can follow. Amen to that. <laughs> Landy, that's your cue. Oh yeah, uh, that's our big idea. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. <laughs>on a memory verse, Micah 6, 8. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Micah 6, 8. Now let's pray. Everybody bow your heads, close your eyes, and fold your hands. 
Dear God, thank you for giving us leaders we can follow, leaders who are kind and real, who show us how to trust you and do the right thing. Help us to take the lead in imitating leaders who love you and care about us, instead of spending a lot of time being influential by people who don't help us grow. We know that when we follow the right people, we are actually following you. Amen. Have a great week, guys.